Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, once in a while, the arts industry or community gives birth to or is blessed with an artist who, beyond their own creative spell and spark, is about the community as a whole and is willing to build a movement, space or platform for other artists, even if it means their own flow takes a backseat. Well, one such artist is at the University of Witwatersrand graduate Anthea Pokre, who is a photographer, come video installation and performance artist. At the Part of a career is I Collect Gingers, a photo project that has seen Pokhara profile thousands of red hairs and take the pictures around the country. When the lens woman puts her camera down, the assemblage studio uh, artist, which uh, provides support opportunities and education for emerging Johannesburg-based visual artists, is top on a priority list simply uh, she and for her and she co-founded it today she is the young creative we are celebrating and good morning welcome to morning live thank you now how did you end up so interested in art and photography that they became the capital cities in your life um i did um art for my trick mm -hmm. and then in grade 10 i um, discovered photography and I took it as an extra subject um, and yeah I did it for matric and and I did painting as well I did it two art subjects for matric and I just I knew that that's what I wanted to do um, I, I was quite passionate about fashion photography when I was at um, high school but then I studied fine art and kind of changed my focus into more kind of contemporary art art realm and then by third year, I knew that I wanted to be an artist. I knew that that was where I was meant to be. Now, your biggest and longest running project was I Collect Gingers. How was, uh, how did how did that come about? When were you aware that it can be a long uh, standing project? Um, so after I graduated from BITS in 2007, I went to go live in London for two years and it was amazing, but it was hard. And um, I unfortunately, didn't make art. I found, you know, being out of a, a comfort zone with lack of resources um, was quite difficult. So I came back in 2010 with kind of a very huge will to to make to make art. And um, I had been keeping journals throughout my time in London, mm. and this ginger thing kept on popping up yeah. in my life. Um, and I, yeah, I just decided to go with it. I think the biggest. Um, restriction for a lot of artists is that they, it's, it's this fear to start. So I just kind of forced myself to just start. Mm. I didn't really know exactly where it was going at the time. Um, and I just kind of it organically grew into, into what it became. And um, it was a very long process. It took about three years to, to from start to my exhibition. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just kind of grew into this monster that I couldn't control. Yeah. <laughs> what were the challenges and the highlights though of our collection just um, I think because, um, well, I think resources mostly because mm. I was, you know, and, and time as well. I I think I could have collected 500 gingers over a shorter time if, yeah. if I was like focused and could do it every day or every weekend. But, um, you know, time and money and, um, you know, it's an, photography is an expensive um, mm hobby or career because I do do it as a career. So it does pay me back. But um, so, yeah, so basically and trying to find the gingers as well. I think for the first um, hundred gingers, I stalked people on uh, the streets and in doctor's rooms and in clubs and bars. <laughs> and, um, but eventually the word of mouth started to spread and people started contacting me. And to this day, I still get emails from gingers from all over the world yeah. asking to be collected. So yeah, so it kind of, it, it started growing, um, as I said, out of my hands and mm. I, I, I'm, I've got this long waiting list and I, I need to get through, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm working towards a future project where I will be able to take the project global. What has art taught you about your love for the art form and about you? I think, um, I think often people think that, you know, doing art as a trick subject or going to study it is, is kind of an easy way out. Um, but it's, it's, incredibly, it's incredibly difficult because it's so attached to your... Um, your emotion, your intellect, um, you know, when you get criticized on your work, it's not just your work, it's you, it's coming from inside mm. of you. And um, it's incredibly difficult to, uh, to detach yourself from the work that you make. Um, so I think that's been the, 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 the biggest challenge for me is, is the confidence in the work mm. and, um, and putting it out there. It's incredibly scary you know, putting it out there online and in a gallery and getting getting criticism yeah. and feedback. But but I'm 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 very pro feedback and, and which is 
kind of part of why we started Assemblage as mm. well is to kind of create support and feedback and guidance and advice and mentorship really. So I'm quite um, pro that. So I'm always open to, to getting getting feedback and criticism. Also, you know, that was going to be my next question. I mean, the idea of assemblage, how was that born? Um, what is sustaining it at the moment? So again, being away in London and being away from South Africa and coming back and seeing what was there and what, you know, what we needed here. So um, both myself and um, Louise van der Bell, who started Assemblage um, with me, uh, we studied together. We, um, we both wanted to be artists and we just didn't know how to do this thing yeah. called being an artist. Yeah. Um, you know, we studied a four year degree, but kind of didn't really know what the practical steps to take were. So that's why we started Assemblage was to develop a support structure and a network for artists that had kind of either come out of an institution or were self-taught and didn't have that kind of support and guidance and um and skill set also i mean we we so so basically we run workshops in professional practice and mm -hmm. so we teach artists very kind of pragmatic and practical skills about how to run their business how to run the being an artist as a career and as a business uh, we run a mentorship program we do group exhibitions to provide um, alternative platforms for artists because we do have a limited amount of galleries in this mm. country so we can't be entirely dependent on the galleries to kind of snatch snatch us yeah. up we kind of have to make a place for ourselves so that's that's why we do the group exhibitions and we also started uh, studios in Newtown in 2012 and um, that's it's an amazing space. It's an amazing community. We've got about 23 artists working from there. And we've just recently opened a printmaking studio. And um, you asked how it's sustained. The mm. printmaking studio has been opened as a, so we're a nonprofit organization, but we've opened the printmaking um, studio as a business so that and assemblage as a shareholder so that hopefully one day we can self-sustain mm. and not be completely reliant on funding, which yeah. is always a very tricky mm topic in the non-profit <laughs> yeah. industry. I mean, who for you has been that shiny example or sense of influence? Um, hmm. there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of people in the organization that are doing um, incredibly amazing things like that we collaborate with a lot. Um, so I, I'm going to say organizations rather than people, mm. but there's the Bag Factory who have been running for over 20 yeah. years, the artist studios. So, you know, we, we look up to them quite a lot and, and see, you know, how we can how we can do things the same or different. Um, there's the Tuba Arts Fund, which are they fund five artists a year yeah. to um, to make a body of work and an exhibition. Um, they're the so, ones in Brom from Teen Hill. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just, yeah, further down on Juta. And um, I think I, I, I have a lot of admiration for both of those organizations because um, we, we just have, ultimately, we have the same goal in, in providing these platforms for artists and developing community and network. And I think Assemblage for us is, is all about community and having, you know, having friendships actually with your peers um, and learning and exchanging skills and advice and knowledge and um, and that's really why we started Assemblage. All right, let's go back a little bit to uh, the gingers. Um, when you look at the project now, who are some of the gingers that stand out? Um, well, I have to say C.S. Duplessis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, five FM sports presenter. Yes. Yeah. So he was, one, he was my 11th ginger yeah. uh -huh. out of 500, I think, or 13. But he yeah. was in early days. Um, sure, when I look at some of those babies, yeah. they are just amazing. But um, it's quite interesting because it's five years old now, the project. So these, these, these kids they're are... They're not babies yeah, anymore. Yeah, they're not babies anymore. <laughs> and people often comment on my Facebook page about this, mm. about how, how everyone's kind of changed so much mm. over time. Um, yeah, I also really love some of the older gingers with grey, but you can still see speckles of, of red yeah. coming through. Um, and... Yeah, and a lot of the kids with very, very freckly faces. Because yeah. I think freckles have always been seen as something that isn't desirable. But mm. I, you know, I think that they, they're really beautiful. So that's, that's the way that I, that's something that is appealing to me in the photos. Okay, before I let you go, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? What would you be doing? Hmm. I don't think I would be doing anything else. Um... But I think I always say um, in my photographer role that yeah. I'm, 
that it's the best job for me because I'm quite bossy, so yeah. I can tell people what to do and it's okay. <laughs> um, so probably some kind of director, yeah. project manager kind of, of role. Some sort. <laughs> but I would, wouldn't choose any career that is different from the arts. I'm incredibly passionate about it. So All right. I'm Anthea, happy. thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Such a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, Anthea Pokra is the co-founder of the Newtown-based Assemblage Artist Studios. She's also the eye and snap behind the ever-consistent and growing eye collect gingers. A lot of galleries also trust her to take pictures of the artworks and exhibition. Those are just some of the reasons why She's today's celebrated young creative. Visit www.icollectgingers.com to see how far her photo project has come or www.assemblage to learn more about the non-profit organization she co-founded. Uh, this is Morning Live. Let's take a break. Stay with us.